So distributed transactions are heart and soul of distributed systems and getting all the participating nodes to agree to either commit or about a distributed transaction is not an easy job. In this video, we talk about the two-phase commit protocol that takes baby steps to ensure that we can get all the nodes to either commit or abort while ensuring that the data never goes in an inconsistent state. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort-based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Greek buzzes live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. Say we have a distributed database with three nodes and we want our commit to succeed when the commit at all the DBs succeed. A simple example, say we are doing a put k comma 10 right? and the write, this write should be successful when this write is made on all the three databases. If it fails on any one of them, we should not be considering this write at all. Right? So this is what we are trying to achieve. This is a classic case of distributed transaction where we are writing it in a transactional manner that either everyone succeeds or if even one of them aborts, everything aborts. Right? So before we jump into two-phase commit, we'll go through the assumptions. There are three classic assumptions that will be made, not very severe, but very lenient assumptions that we are making. The first one being that there is no message loss, which means that when two nodes connected to each other via a connection, if this, if one node sends message to other, the message is not lost. The connection may be broken. That is fine. In that case, we would do a retry, but your message once sent will not be lost. Primarily, if we use TCP connections, this is pretty much ensured, right? Second assumption that a process failure can happen, which means that while participating in a distributed transaction, this like one of the node or the leader or someone, something, Processes can crash, but you still should be either committing or aborting and that should be unanimous. Third, your graph is fully connected, which means that every node knows about existence of every other node. You cannot have a partially connected graph, right? So if I have N nodes in my cluster, every node knows about every other node in the cluster, right? And at the end of your distributed transaction, you should ensure or the algorithm, the protocol should ensure that no two processes can decide on different values, which means that either everyone commits or everyone aborts, but you cannot have that, hey, five nodes would commit, but four are aborting, right? So the decision has to be unanimous and it has to be uniform, right? So now let's jump into the two-phase commit protocol and let's see how it tries to ensure and in some cases does ensure a distributed transaction, okay? So two-phase commit, what it says is that, say we have N processes participating in a transaction. Now here, 
we are using a general term called processes. It could be database, it could be API servers, it could be anything. It's just n processes. They are participating in a transaction. And what do we do is we choose a distinguished process, say A. Now this A could be the leader node or the coordinator node having the largest UID, something, something, some way through which we know that this process is going to be the coordinator. In most cases, it could be the first node that received the right request from the client that could become the coordinator or it could be the leader node of your network, anything. But a process, a node has to become the coordinator of this two-phase commit protocol, right? Now, this two-phase commit happens in two phases. That's why the name two-phase commit. Phase number one, where now what would happen is we are preparing to commit. Here, what we would do is all the nodes, if they can commit or abort, they send this value to A, given that A is your coordinator node, right? So, A, if I have a four node network, A, B, C, D, A is my coordinator. So, I will be receiving messages from B, C and D, setting if they can commit or not, right? So, A is the one who is gathering all the information about all other nodes and asking, hey, can you commit, can you commit, can you commit? And they would be responding yes or no. Right. So they would be responding if they can commit or not. Right. In case A does not receive a message from any of the node, it can assume by default that that node is going to abort. Right. Okay. So A up until now has gathered all the decisions and it knows its own decision whether it itself can commit or not. Right. And the idea is pretty simple. If every node commits, then the decision is commit. If every node abort, if even one of the node aborts, the decision is about, right? So that the at the end of phase one, A has information about all the nodes, whether they are trying or whether they are, uh, whether they can commit or they can abort. It knows its own decision. So in totality, A would know if the overall decision is going to be commit or abort. In the phase two, what would happen is your process A will broadcast this information, like basically this decision to all the nodes in the network. Right. So once A has understood that final thing, either it is commit or abort, it will let this information percolate in the network well such that B, C and D would be known, or like would realize that, hey, are we committing or not? Right. They would know, they would know the decision from A because A is sending the message to every one of them. So just to reiterate, two-phase commit happens in two phases. First one, where everyone sends its decision to the coordinator node. In the phase two, your coordinator sends the final decision that the entire cluster is taking to every single one of the node, as simple as it can be, right? Okay, in case, in case if any node did not participate in round one due to any reason, maybe crash, maybe anything, they will be deciding on the decision sent by A. So whatever A decides, because you did not participate, you have to live like it's classic election case. Where even if you didn't vote, the person who came into the power, you have to abide to that person because that person is the leader slash king slash minister, whatever you'd want to name it, right? Okay, this is a classic case of two-phase commit, right? Now, here the interesting part is, obviously, it is not foolproof. It's prone to a lot of failures and which is what gave us rise to other algorithms. But now let's understand the failure scenarios in a network that implements two-phase commit protocol. Case number one where your coordinator node fails before initiating the first phase. So what would happen? Let's say you got some right and you wanted to know whether my network is going to commit or abort, but your coordinator node, before even initiating the first phase, whether when the other nodes are sending the, the coordinator node the information, their decision, right? if it failed, which means that your consensus did not begin at all. So all good. So, because nothing even got started, even if your coordinator fails with the, at that time, it's all good because you're not making any decision. What would happen typically if a coordinator it crashes, the network automatically picks another coordinator through any leader election strategy, right? Okay. Second, if the coordinator fails after initiating the first phase, which means that what would happen if your coordinator after initiating the first phase, which means that while it is about to receive messages from the participating nodes, what if some of the nodes sent A the message, which means it sent their decision whether they can commit or abort. 
if they send their decision to the coordinator node, what would happen? So some nodes who send their state are blocked on the coordinator to respond. Classic case, because your coordinator failed after initiating the first phase, which means if B and C send their decision to A, the coordinator, now B and C would be waiting perpetually to receive response from A that what's the final decision because they are just telling their decision. Now A needs to make the final decision and send them. So if your coordinator fails after initiating the phase one, the everything comes to a halt because the coordinate, the nodes who send the messages to A, they're waiting for a response to come from A, but A is crashed. So they'll not get any information. So this is a perpetual starving, but you can solve it with timeouts and doing a re-election and whatnot. But it's a critical case where up until the time your nodes realize that the coordinator is down, everything comes to a grinding halt. They're continuously waiting. Fine. Case number three, where your two-phase commit comes to a halt when the participant crashes before sending its preference to the coordinator because coordinator cannot proceed. Let's say you have three nodes or rather your network has four nodes. One of them is coordinator. Three nodes are sending the first node the information. So B, C and D are sending the information to A. What if B sent a message, C sent a message, but D crashed. A is waiting for the decision from D. Up until the time A realizes that D crashes, A is blocked. So your entire two-phase commit comes to a grinding halt up until all the nodes can send their local decisions to A. Problem. Right? This is a failure scenario. The next one, this is an interesting one. So if a participant crash at phase two, which means that they all let the coordinator know about their decision. Now coordinator is sending the final decision to the participant. And at this stage, if one of the participant crashed, now what would happen, right? So the coordinator, the coordinator does not know if the participant who just crashed crashed before applying the changes or after applying the changes, right? Although coordinator know the global decision, right? Whether it had to commit or abort, but your participant who crashed, coordinator does not know that if the participant applied the changes or it or it was about to apply the changes at that time, the crash happened. So when, here, when the participant comes back up, it does not know if it has to commit or abort. Problem. This is a classic case. So that is where obviously all the participating nodes needs to somehow maintain this state persistent so that even after recovering from the crash, they have that information. This is there to highlight this particular point. Now things become extra interesting in the fifth case where if coordinator and one participant die in phase two. So every node sent its local decision to A. A made the global decision. Now what A did is A when it is broadcasting the information, it is broadcasting the information one by one to each of the other node, right? So B, C and D, A is sending message to B, C and D individually. Say A sent a message to B. And after this, A and B both crashed. So when this happens, the biggest problem here is when other nodes would be electing the leader, other nodes are not aware on what the decision was made by A because they are yet to receive the message from A and before that only A crashed, which means the decision of the coordinator is not known by anyone. Right? And now, when the participant has uh, when the participant has crashed, the same problem comes back up again. Where after recovery, participant does not know what to do. So participant in itself needs to maintain the state. If it received a message, it crashed before or after and whatnot. But this is a classic case where after recovering, you are not like your system is not able to auto proceed. Primarily because it does not like the system. The entire system is not aware of the final decision that has been taken. So re-election after that things come to a grinding halt problem. So that is where these are the challenges. All that sounds so simple, but in distributed systems, anything and everything could go wrong. And thinking of that, such edge cases are not so uncommon. You'll find them in, in your day-to-day -day use cases as well. Right. So that is where we have to be extra careful when we are designing or picking up a particular protocol.
right so this is one of the reasons why two phase commit is called as a blocking protocol because in case of a failure of a call in or a participant in most cases you are not able to confidently recover and resume your operations you might need some manual intervention here and there it's not so easy so there has to be a better way to do this which we'll be discussing in the upcoming videos right but just to do a quick complexity analysis of this we know that your two phase commit happens for two rounds so that's your time complexity and your communication complexity is because in first phase every node sends message to a which means n minus 1 message will be exchanged and in the second phase a will be sending message to n minus 1 nodes so the total number of communication happening or the communication complexity becomes 2 times n minus 1 so 2 n minus 2 is the communication complexity of this algorithm right that's not so critical as compared to the edge cases that we just saw which is where we introduced a new protocol called a three phase commit which we'll be taking a look in the next video right so yeah that's it for this one uh, i would highly encourage you to draw a bit of flow diagrams to understand all possible failure scenarios that we just talked about so that you understand the beauty and the beast of distributed systems because it's not it looks very easy but it's definitely not because a lot of edge cases are there that that basically pops up when you are working in a distributed environment so yeah that's it for this one if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub i post three in-depth engineering videos every week and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton